Okay, welcome to the tutorial video for gates. First thing we're gonna do is open up the box, take a look at uh, all the components that come within the game, and we'll take a look at some of the new cards and maybe discuss a few of those things before we actually bring out the beautiful new game mat, and uh, I'll show you how this game works um, with gate. So let's open it up, see what, we come, what comes in here. You're gonna get uh, two new dice. Um, these will be used to track the health of the two new uh, locations that are in this game. Um, you will also get a couple of new uh, health tokens to track uh, the uh, damage you've done to enemies. So we have our uh, mini deck and then let's see what else we got in here. Put this off to the side. Okay. Um, we have two new locations that come in gates that you'll be protecting. One is the tavern, and the tavern starts with, well, this is on the hardcore mode. So just like in the original gate, um, there is a standard mode, and if you flip it over, there is a hardcore mode. So let's just look at the standard mode. Uh, the tavern only starts with four health, so it's a little bit weaker of a, a structure to defend. Um, plus one when calming once per turn while still standing. So while the tavern is still um, around or still standing within your city walls, you will gain a plus one whenever you try to calm your citizens. So again, that's a pretty nice little uh, bonus to have, so maybe a structure you'd like to keep around. Okay, um, secondly, we have the mill. Uh, barricades cost one less while still standing. So as long as you have the mill still around, starts with four health as well, um, you can build barricades um, for one less. We'll talk about barricades in a minute. It's one of the new mechanics that was that's, uh, Gates introduces to the game. Also, really quickly, uh, Gates also comes obviously with an, uh, new instruction cards, double-sided instruction cards. There's only four cards of instructions that go over all the new content that you're going to, uh, all the new content that comes in here, how to use it. We're going to go over that, most of it in this video. Um, also, as a little bonus for um, backing um, this project or, or getting your hands on this Gates, you're going to get some promo cards for another solo game of mine, Tin Helm. This will come with an instruction cards how to utilize these new cards, but essentially you're getting uh, two new uh, race slash class card. So this will add two new races and on the reverse sides are two new classes. So the half folk and the half orc will be added to Tin Helm and the classes of Druid and Skull Keeper. So you'll, this basically what this does is expands the number of player uh, hero combinations in the game from uh, 12 possible combinations to 30. So if you own Tin Helm, you're really gonna like these cards. It also adds a new trappings card uh, that you'll need because of these new characters. So th let's get those out of the way as to not confuse ourselves. What else comes in gates? So we know we got some locations, we got some dice, we got some um, tokens. We also have two new heroes. So when setting up the game, instead of because in the base game has five heroes this will add two new heroes to the game you will now shuffle all seven cards including these obviously and you'll remove two without looking at them and remove them from play and you'll still only have five heroes in the game but you won't know which ones are not in the game so that'll add a little bit of variety um, we have two new starting citizen card so part of your starting hand gate only had three so you'd always start the game in gate with the same three characters and that could, did sort of lead to repetitive play so that's what gates tries to address is making as uh as much um, components in the game as possible have variety so now you have two extra cards so how does this work you shuffle these two cards in with the three from the original game. You draw um, two at random, and those two are part of your starting hand. And then you get to look at the remaining three cards and choose one to add to those other two to get your starting three. That way you have a little bit of control and, uh, into balancing your hand to start the game. And every time you play, you're gonna have different cards to start the game. So that might, may affect your early game play. 
Now, something that everyone always asks for is more, 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 and more. So we added quite a few, and I say we, I mean me. I added 12 new um, characters that you are citizens that you can hire. And my goal when making all these new citizens was to have them, or the majority of them, I think almost all of them, if uh, maybe one or two don't, but almost all of them have a special ability. So in the pre, in the, in just in the plain gate, most of the citizens just gave you um, numeric values in these different set abilities. Whereas you'll see in gate and gates, um, the new characters have all sorts of new skills. Um, we'll go through them very quickly here just so you can see the variety of new cards. Just adding 12 cards will add quite a bit of, um, again, versatility to the game. Uh, so you have the assassin. You may trash one card in hand after using it. Uh, you have the merchant. All commands cost only one gold this turn. The commander. The call to arms command costs one this turn. The Gambler, you may double the income of another card. That's a really nice card to have early in the game. Uh, the Gypsy, you may discard a card from your hand and draw two new ones. So this allows you to sort of build the hand, your hand each turn the way you want. Uh, the Martyr, this is a fun card. You may trash this card to defeat a single enemy. Yes, this can the Martyr can defeat any enemy in the game. Uh, the coachman, you may take the caravan command for free. Makes sense. Uh, the brute, uh, you may trash this card uh, to place a barricade. So essentially the brute becomes a barricade. That was the thinking there. Uh, the wizard, you may draw one more card. That's nice. So the wizard is very similar to, uh, what was the other one in the original game? The, the swindler, I believe. And yeah, so you can now um, have another card that allows you to draw more cards into your hand. But the wizard's obviously quite a bit better. Uh, you have the vagabond. You may discard this card from your hand and draw a new one. So that if you don't like the vagabond, you could potentially discard the vagabond and draw a new card. Or maybe there's a starting card in your hand that you don't like. You can use this power to, to get rid of that. And it only costs two. He's a nice little card to get early in game if possible. You have the nomad. You may take one card from your discard pile and place it on top of your draw pile. That's a nice little power. And then the woodcutter, maybe my favorite card in the game. And if you get the woodcutter, he really is going to dictate how you play the game. Um, barricades cost one less per turn. So let's talk about barricades because um, the mill makes them cost one less. And if you have the woodcutter and the mill is still up, they're going to cost two less. So you have barricades. There are five barricades, one for each location. You can only have one barricade at a time in front of a location. They cost three. So if your mill is not functioning or destroyed, I should say, and you don't have the woodcutter, they're going to cost you three. But as long as your mill is up and running, a barricade is only going to cost you two. What does the barricade do? Barricades will absorb all attacks from a single attack. For, oh, let me read that again. Barricades will absorb damage from a single attack to the location they are protecting. They also deal one damage to the foe that dealt the attack one-time use. So you place a barricade in front of a location when you're going to want to do it looking ahead at the monsters and seeing where the monsters are going to be attacking and it will protect um, that location. Um, it will absorb all that damage and in fact deal one damage back to the enemy but then this card gets um, um, uh, trashed essentially. So they're uh, one-time use cards but they in, in some games they become extremely important. So Last thing in here, we have to go over for sure our enemies. I saved the best for last. Everyone wants more enemies. So in the base game, you had nine. You had three waves, three enemies in each wave, and there was always the same nine. Now, yes, you would shuffle each wave so you wouldn't know exactly which order the enemies would come out in, but probably the biggest um, ask, I shouldn't say complaint, but the biggest ask that people had was more enemies, more variety, so you don't know what enemies are coming. So in gates, this is the only one of the bigger changes along with barricades, instead of having three cards per wave, there is now four cards per wave plus Zogar at the end. So instead of being nine, essentially nine rounds or, or nine waves of enemies coming in, you're up now to uh, 13. So 
let's take a look at some of the new enemies. And how it works is there is three new enemies per wave in this expansion. So you're going to take the three from the original game and three from the new game, shuffle them together for each wave and draw four. So there'll be two enemies in each wave that'll be discarded without looking at them. So you won't know at all what enemies are coming. Okay, so let's look at some new enemies. We have the Flyclops. He doesn't have any special abilities, but he is a fly with a giant eye. Flyclops. We have the Lost Corpse. Now, Lost Corpse is a, is a, is a nasty card. She only um, gives you one victory point, only has two health. She's pretty weak, but you may not calm your citizens while the Lost Corpse is alive. So if she comes later, like the last card in wave one, she can kind of mess you up a little bit. You have the Doom Skull. Uh, the Doom Skull uh, made an appearance in Tin Helm, and here's a Doom Skull here. Uh, the Doom Skull deals one damage to the gate when first revealed. So as soon as this card is revealed, it attacks the gate for one damage, can't be defended, and that's that. Unless, of course, you happen to have a barricade there. Vile Stalker. Now we're moving on to wave two, the Vile Stalker. You may not hire citizens while the Vile Stalker is active. So you want to get rid of him because he's going to go kill your citizens and keep them from uh, uh, wanting to... Uh, he's going to scare the, scare the bejesus out of all your citizens. So, uh, yeah, he's a nasty guy. You have the Blood Monk. Uh, remove all damage tokens when this card is revealed. So what's nasty about him is if you had previously uh, damaged an enemy and then the Blood Monk um, shows up, he will heal uh, his fellow enemy and remove all uh, damage tokens from them. You have the Shell Spawn. The Shell Spawn ignores barricades. So if you add, add a new mechanic to the game, you got to have something that sort of uh, goes around that new mechanic. So the Shell Spawn does just that. Uh, the Devourer, uh, one damage to each location. So very similar to the Grave Lord in the original game, this slightly less health. A weaker version, we should say. Then we have the Blight Golem. He is just nasty. He does two damage to the gate. He does two um, fair to your citizens. Then we have the Tentasteed. Who doesn't want to battle the skull of a horse attached to an octopus that floats? Um, he just does uh, nasty attacks to your mill. So if you're trying to build up a game that has a lot of barricades, he's going to not be something you want to see. And lastly, we have Zogar. Zogar makes appearance in gate and does plus two, or does, I'm sorry, two damage to each location, has quite a bit of health, does two fair, he is nasty, and he is his own wave. He comes at the end of the game, and uh, yes, he is not uh, very friendly. He is basically like the Grave Lord um, on steroids. So that is what comes in the game. Let's uh, take a pause, we'll come right back, and I'll have it all set up on the um, new game map. Okay, what we have here is uh, the majority of the components from the base game of Gate, set up to play a game of Gate. Not completely set up, but we're going to be, I'm going to show you basically how we set up Gate um, using the Gates expansion. What you're seeing here is the beautiful Gates play mat um, or game mat. This thing measures 14 by 24. It's, it's more than twice the size of the original game mat. I think it does a really great way, a uh, great job of. Um, bringing the theme together. Also should be noted that along the bottom here is the uh, round uh, sequence. So enemies advance, draw up, use commands, recruit, use cards, enemies attack. All this information is on the back of the, of the turn on, on the turn sequence card. But there's a spot on the map for your to keep it on the command side. So you can look at your different optional commands and then you can have your information for the turn sequence right here in front of you. Okay, let's move into um, what we gotta do here for setup. So the locations are out for the base game, so we need to add the two new, two new locations. So we will add the tavern and we will add the mill. The uh, tavern starts with four health and so does the mill. So they're a little bit weaker locations than the locations in the base game. And they're even weaker if you were to flip all these cards to their reverse hardcore mode side. We have a little spot here for all of our uh, health tokens. Next thing we're gonna look at is our starting hand. So how does that work? 
in the original game, you just had these three cards every single time, so you always started the game the same. Uh, with the expansion of Gates, we will be adding two new characters, the Storyteller and the Peddler, and we will shuffle those in. And we will draw two cards at random. We got the Farmer and the Guard. And then we will get to look at the other three remaining cards and choose any one that we want to form our starting hand. In this way, you're, uh, you'll, you'll start with a new hand just about every single time, and you'll have a little bit of control as to it, their overall ability. So now I have a character that can repair and a character that can attack. Maybe I want something that has the ability to um, calm my citizens. This one here, the new storyteller, uh, allows me to repair, allows me to calm my citizens, and recruiting a citizen costs one less gold this turn. So that's a really nice card to have early in the game because you're going to want to build up your deck. Uh, one thing that you're going to notice in this game, seeing as how it's going to take, a, it's going to add, it's about 10 minutes longer than it used to be because you're uh, there's new more. You're going to have to battle through more enemies. Um, the longer waves allow you to have more time to build up your deck. That was something that people had brought to my attention that they didn't feel like they had quite enough time to build their deck up because this essentially is a deck builder. But uh, with the, the rounds, each uh, wave being a little bit longer, that first wave's fairly easy to get through and that gives you time to build up your deck. So having the Storyteller is a pretty solid starting card to have. Okay. Next, we have a setup for this little spot here, which is going to be for your heroes. Um, we have the five heroes from the base game. We're going to add two heroes from the new expansion, the Sorceress and the Clay Golem. And we will shuffle those guys in. And then we will be removing two from the game. So just two at random are out. And then the remaining five will be there, ready to be uh, brought into, it, into the game. Now, adding the new citizens is pretty simple. These are all the citizens cards from the base game. We're going to grab all the citizens cards from this expansion, and we're just going to shuffle them together, and they're going to be together now. Um, it should be noted that all the expansions cards next to their um, value at the top um, is a little red um, blood drip and that will indicate that it's from the expansion. So if for some reason you wanted to separate these cards again and play just the base game, you can. Um, I would imagine most people aren't going to do that. You're probably going to keep one, one size card in, in one tin and another size in the other, in the other tin because you're going to need both tins to store all of this. Um, so just like you do in the regular game, you shuffle them up and then you reveal some cards for the market or basically a market like any deck builder these are the citizens that you're going to be um, recruiting these are their costs right here this is the abilities that they have and some have special abilities as well now the fun part is enemies how does this work um, as mentioned before you're going to get the waves you're going to separate them by wave so there's wave one wave two and wave three you're going to get the new enemies. Zogar is going to go on the bottom. So take Zogar, he's going to go there. You're going to fight him at the end. And then you're going to add the uh, new cards to each corresponding wave. So now there's six cards in each one, but you're not going to go through all six. You're going to shuffle these up and you're going to remove two, leaving you with four. So let's take those two off the bottom, leaving you with four. You're going to do that for each deck, and what this is going to do is make each game completely unique. You're not going to know what enemies are coming. So we'll just remove these two, put those there, and we'll do the for the final deck, wave three to shuffle them up. I'm just going to shuffle them real quick, remove the bottom two, and then you're going to stack each wave on top of each other. Wave one you're going to deal with first, so it goes on top of wave two, wave two on top of wave three, and all of them on top of Zogar. So as the enemies advance, you're going to be going through each wave um, by numeric value. And that is pretty much everything. Oh, hold, forgot one thing. We have the barricade. So there's a spot for the barricades right here, uh, right above the pyramid, because you, know, you can't put a barricade in front of the pyramid. This makes a great little spot for them. And as you place barricades, there's a little spot for each one in front of each location. So there are 
five barricade cards so you could potentially have a barricade in front of all locations though that rarely happens so let's take a look I'll take a pause we'll come right back we'll, we'll play a little bit and um, just to give you an idea of how the game works most there's a ton of uh, not a ton but there's quite a few tutorial videos and playthroughs of the base game gate and nothing is really changed um, except for a few little things and we'll go over those in a second okay so we're um, all ready to go we're gonna play through just a couple of rounds just to give you an idea um, of how these new some of these new cards work um, as I said nothing is um, a lot not a whole lot has changed from the base game of gate as far as how the rounds work and things of that nature there's just more content as far as um, as you can tell there's more citizens enemies and so forth okay so let's play a couple of rounds so we have enemies advance that's the first thing that happens so enemy comes out reveal the first one we have the plague rats um, plague rats have four health they're going to attack the farm Every location has an icon, so it, we know we have uh, information here that it will be attacking the farm at the end of the round. That's the last thing that's going to happen, so we have a little bit of time to make adjustments and plan and plan for that. It's also going to raise our fare. Wait a second, where is my fare cube? Yes, we must put the cube of fare on the fare mid. Okay, now we're ready to go. So. Enemies advance. Now we draw up. Well, we have our three starting cards, so we have these already ready in our hand. We can use commands. So there's uh, th uh, three commands. I'm sorry, four commands. You can um, d use uh, money on your card. So sometimes there's going to be things you want to do, and you just don't have the cards that have that innate ability to do. Like maybe we don't have a card that can attack, and we really want to uh, maybe deal one more damage to kill an enemy. We can spend money to do the just about any action you want in the game it's just it's not very um advantageous to do so because it costs more than it really should but that's but it does give you the ability to um, do things that you wouldn't normally be able to do so you can call the arms cost two you can do a, a single attack you can spend one uh, money or uh, one gold to remove all these cards discard them and get four new citizens in case maybe you just don't like what's up there you can spend two to do a festival, which you can for, which your citizens forget their sorrows, which allows you to move the cube down on the pyramid. If the cube ever gets to the top, um, you lose the game. If the gate ever loses all its health, you lose the game. Those are the two ways that you lose the game. You can also fortify. You can spend two gold to repair one location. Okay, so let's look at our cards. We have the storyteller, which allows us to recruit citizens at one for one less. And we have the uh, farmer who can do repairing, uh, gets plus one repairing the farm, and nothing's been damaged yet. And we have the guard that can deal one damage or has one money. So I think the best thing to do right off the bat is I'm going to use my storyteller. Ooh, wait a second, we don't have a lot of money here. Oh wait, we can do this. Storyteller uh, has the ability to, rec uh, recruiting a citizen costs one less gold this turn. So if I use the money from the farmer, because you can only use one of these uh, attributes, so I couldn't use both the money and the repair action, I have to choose an action. So I'm gonna use the farmer's uh, um, income action. Now, the information down here or the special ability, you always get to do that as well. So you get to choose one of these four, and you, if there is some sort Sort of ability you get that ability um, also so but the farmer is plus one in repairing so I'm not actually taking the repair action so I'm gonna use the storyteller get its recruiting a citizen's cost for one less and the farmers income of one so you're like well that's only one gold what are you gonna you can't possibly afford any of these characters not necessarily true because I have the farm the farm is still standing now uh, while the farm is still standing plus one to a single purchase once per turn while still standing. So while, since my farm is still operating, I get one extra income every round for recruiting or taking commands. So that gives me one, plus the one from the farmer means I have two gold. Well, none of these cost two, but this warden does cost three. And since I have the storyteller, it will cost me one less. So I will use these two cards to recruit the warden. That goes into my discard. I immediately move this card over and reveal a new card. Now I have my guard. I'm going to use my guard to attack. 
He can attack for one, but the tower is standing. Plus one to a single attack, once per turn, while still standing. So I will get to add one to the one damage that the guard does it and do two damage. So I will get two tokens on the plague rat. So I uh, didn't use any commands. I did recruit. I used my other cards. Now it's the enemy's turn to attack. Well, the plague rat is not dead, so he's going to get to attack me. He has four health, I only did two. He's going to attack my farm for uh, w one damage. So my farm moves down to five. And then the uh, he does one to my pyramid, which triggers the sun icon, which means a hero has arrived. So what you do with that is you place the hero into your discard pile. Now, um, that ends the round. We'll go through one more round just to give you an idea of how things work. Maybe I'll build a barricade even, maybe it won't even be uh, a smart thing to do, but I'll just show you how that works. So now we go, we're done with the round, we go to the next round. Enemies advance, so this plague rat moves to here. A new enemy comes out. Now we're gonna have to deal with both these enemies at the same time. If we don't kill them, they're both gonna be attacking at the end of the round. So we have to really be conscious of that and what locations they're going after. Flyclops is gonna raise fear, so we're getting a lot of uh, damage to our pyramid. And um, it's going to be attacking our tavern. It only has three health. So that is that. Um, if we don't kill these monsters and the next round begins and we have to advance enemies, um, this enemy will leave the game, but before it leaves it'll do one damage to the gate that you cannot block, not even a barricade, and then this card will, um, will advance and new card will move on. So we'll shuffle our discard just like any good deck builder and draw three cards to get our hand should be using these beautiful spaces here. Uh, we got the Traveler was the hero that showed up. We got the Storyteller again and the Guard. So we know what the Guard does, we know what the Storyteller does. What is this? What does this Traveler do? What does this mysterious woman do? And it looks like she might have a power cell from Desolate as a necklace. Interesting. Anyways, uh, She's very versatile. She allows you to do just anything you want, for only for the value of one. You may draw two more cards uh, this and one time use. So it's a one time use, but I get to draw two more cards. So basically I'm getting all my cards at once. So this would be a really nice round for me. So, uh, let's see what we want to do here. I definitely want to use this Warden for its attack. It does a value, attack value of two. So that'll be nice. Let's move him over there. I'm pretty sure I know what I want to do with him. Um, let's see here. Uh, how much money do I have? I could do another damage. I could do a total of three plus the tower four damage. I don't know how helpful that is. It's not going to be enough to kill the Flyclops. Now I could do that. What care oh, the mercenary show up. Mercenary is a definite card that I want to get. So in in actuality I'd probably go after the mercenary and then do damage uh, to these enemies, but I would like to show you how a barricade is built. So I might go that route, because I can always get him anyway. So I will do the warden will attack for two damage, plus the tower is three. So I will do two more additional damage to the plague rat, which is four, so he is dead. The remaining one damage will move over to the Flyclops, okay? So this goes here. Enemies that you defeat, you get to keep these cards. So you'll keep those face, face up over here, and at the end of the game, you'll add up um, the value here for your final score. Enemies that escape go here into the discard. Okay, um, so the Warden's done. Let's put him in the discard. I would like to build a barricade. I will use, maybe I'll use the farmer and the traveler. Oh, I could do I could do a lot this turn. I can do the farmer and the traveler's income. I'm sorry, um, yes, the, the farmer and the traveler. And they can, and since the, actually since the mill is up, barricades will only cost me two. So I'll spend these two to um, build a barricade. Where am I gonna build a barricade? Well, that's pretty self-explanatory. The one location that's gonna be getting attacked, I'm gonna protect my tavern so it doesn't take any damage. So I will build a barricade here at the tavern. Now I'll move these cards over. I have the storyteller 
and the guard left. Uh, let's see here. I will use the storyteller to, I could repair. I also could defend, but I'm going to, uh, I will use it to calm my citizens to bring my pyramid back down. Pyramid really is important. Now, some of these new enemies really do a lot of, cause a lot of fear. And lastly, my guard, I could attack for one plus, I could just kill the Flyclops. I could just kill the Flyclops, but um, instead of doing that, because I think my barricade, well, my barricade will not kill him. Maybe I should just kill him. In, in, in the real world, I would just kill the Flyclops with my guard right now, because they get to add one from the tower for two, which would be enough to kill him. But I would really, at the same point, like to add this mercenary. So I will spend one money plus one income from the farm, and I will buy, or uh, hire, I should say, the mercenary, and that's my turn. Um, now, enemy attacks, he is going to deal, he's gonna attack the tavern, but he can't because there's a barricade. So, the barricade will take that damage instead and cause one damage to the Flyclops. So, all in all, not a terrible turn. I was able to hire a character, def no, took no damage, and um, build a barricade. So this is how Gates changes Gate. Now I'm not gonna do the whole playthrough right now. Uh, maybe in the, in the near future I will do an entire playthrough. But you can see that the barricades are gonna add a lot of strategy and tactic to the game. You can see what enemies are out, what they're going to be attacking. You might be able to util utilize barricades, especially if you get this woodcutter character because then they'd only cost you one. It becomes a no-brainer to build a barricade every time he comes up. Um, and you can see these new locations um, are going to add um, a little bit of um, intrigue to the game. And that's basically how Gates plays. Like I said, it plays almost identical to Gates, except there's just more stuff. The only thing that's really different is the barricades. And there's a lot more special abilities on the cards. So any questions or comments, please leave them below and I will answer them as soon as I can. Thank you very much. And please uh, tell your friends about Gates and we can get as many backers as we can during the crowd sale. Thank you.